<laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> seriously, uh, the metaverse is just one of the many forms of virtual reality on the internet. You have forms of metaverse like Fortnite, uh, Roblox, and even Minecraft. Basically, the metaverse is just a virtual world for grown-ups that has a goal into uniting us virtually. So you will get the gameplay. You will, will get online concerts. You'll be able to conduct business through the metaverse. But in my honest opinion, I think meta makes the Oculus, right? So I think this may be a ploy for them to sell more Oculus units since Apple has kind of cashed in on their app stealing thing. And I'm just saying that jokingly, yeah. but <laughs> there are some practical purposes to the metaverse. And I mean, it, it's it's pretty interesting, all the things that could happen if the public embraces the metaverse. I, I mean, I, I find it vaguely terrifying that, that, I mean, it, already through COVID, we sort of sped up the idea that we don't have to be in the, the same room to have uh, a relationship or a, a, a meeting um, or, or whatever. That That's kind of really pushed that forward through, through COVID and lockdowns and things. But the idea that I could have an avatar that went for a meeting with your avatar and we could sit down at a pretend table and hash out a business deal um, uh, uh, called Kelso Electronics. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's just kind of weird to me. It's just pushing human human interaction further and further away. Yeah, it really is. But, I mean, we are physical creatures, so I think there are some of us that could live in the virtual world, but then us touchy-feely people, I don't think that we would ever embrace the metaverse completely now there are there are applications where it could come in handy like virtual work so for example if you've done your pair of goggles or your headset and you've got your little handheld things there is some interaction because obviously you've got the meta world around you so you can see your environment you can interact with your avatars but just in a business standpoint i think it would work but just from a you know, just from an everyday standpoint, I just don't think that the metaverse will just encompass everything where we're like that scene from Wally, -E where you've got the boatload of people that are just sitting on their headsets, just interacting with everything but each other. I think that that will never happen. I hope that will never happen. But it does appear that our our children are more versed with with it than we were they're kind of being brought up with it you know the whole it may not be um the the metaverse as such but you know my son when he was younger i'd hear him talking to kids via some game he was playing in japan or in canada or or wherever it was we i would never have thought of, of, of that that would have been possible um but we are tra we're kind of training children and young people that they don't have to have that human contact anymore. You're exactly right, because my boys have this issue with roadblocks. I mean, they're on their laptops on a daily basis, interacting with kids all over the world. Yeah. And, and you have to think about what is the internet trying to train our future rate generations to do? Because think about it, in Roblox and in Fortnite, and even in Minecraft, you do have verbal exchanges uh, you can chit chat back and forth but you also have money exchanges too like yeah. you've got roblox uh, you got robux on roblox um i forget what it is in fortnite but it seems like the whole industry is trying to train the future generation to become more of a virtual society than a real life society and that's something that parents really need to take a step back and think about that do we really want our kids in that type of world? I mean, that it, it is really, really worrying uh, that that it. I I believe that's what's happening is that there's a, some kind of drive to 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 this form of human isolation. The question is, I don't. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, what is the benefit? I mean, to governments, uh, a population that is at home in a virtual world are easier to control than populations who walk out on the street and may be subject to crime or take part in, you know, an accident, costing money with health services, et cetera, et cetera. But, but what's in it for the metaverse? Well, for meta, it's obviously if you get more companies to invest in meta, then they own 
our larger scale of what's called their metaverse. I mean, obviously right now, companies like, well, Roblox and Fortnite, they're doing a heck of a job because they've got millions of subscribers from all over the world. But I mean, ultimately it benefits Meta. It helps uh, Meta. I always want to call them Facebook and I think they always will be Facebook to They'll me. They'll always be Facebook. Call them Facebook. That's fine yeah, by me. Let's Facebook. call them Facebook. That really annoy them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll but I mean, it benefits, them. <laughs> it benefits them. They're trying to make make it seem like the metaverse is just going to be encompassing the internet, and it's not. It's just one small puzzle piece in the grander scale that's going to benefit them. So the more companies that they can attract to, you know, interact in the metaverse, and it just means more billions of dollars for Zuckerberg and everyone else associated with Facebook. But in in terms of of you know a, a future where people are uh, you know living in a in a pod, uh, just uh, living their whole world through some kind of virtual world. I mean, presumably then the companies will be advertising virtually. You'll be able to buy stuff virtually. So you know, instead of owning a car, you buy a virtual car. Is is, is that the idea? Obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but yes, that is. The idea is just like uh, the way Facebook is now, where they can track your cookies and see where you've been on other websites on the internet, and then they can target advertising to you. I mean, yeah. basically, Google and Facebook are just ad companies. I mean, the whole idea is to be able to target to their their uh, users what they want. So, I mean, they can look at my profile and figure out what things I like, and the same thing with with you, Petra. I mean, it's I mean that's yeah. the whole goal. Is yeah, no, I, I know. I mean, I all I do, all I do is get um, uh, adverts for drywall installation at the moment because that's that's my world right now is a drywall installation um so I, I mean but they are aware of that because of you know if i'm looking at oh i need a new tap for my bath or whatever and then i'm just inundated with with those uh, and all i've done is gone to a, a company website i haven't even googled it i've gone to a company and said no to all the cookies and yet i still get um sent nothing but plumbing for the next three weeks you know, it could be this thing, too, that you may be just talking around it and it'll just pick up uh, tap or drywall. And the next thing you know, you're inundated with ads from home improvement places. Yeah. I mean, it's I did everywhere. switch the I did switch the ad off the, the, the mic off, though, I thought. Can you not? <laughs> don't laugh at me. I'm old. Um, can you not switch the mic off? I've switched off the Siri mic, but is it yeah, still can... listening? You can still switch it off, but, you know, you have to ask yourself, is it really off, you know? Is it really off? <laughs> You're right. I'm used to a microphone. Um, but, but the only problem is that if it's on this, because my, my son's girlfriend, we were chatting the other day, uh, the, the three of us were, were having lunch, and I mentioned a newsreader that my son knows and I said oh did you hear she got into a bit of trouble so I mentioned her name and the 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 bit of gossip if you like it was an on-air thing so it wasn't private and the next day my hopefully daughter-in-law uh, messaged me and said TikTok have just sent me um the story that we you were talking about in the garden and I never ever have looked up anything like that so her phone was clearly listening to our conversation and she got sent the very clip that I was talking about. You're not shocked, are you? I'm horrified. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's terrible. It is. And if you think about the metaverse, I mean, just think how much easier it will be to have you uh, be inundated with ads, you know? I think it's just horrific, but, was, but there's nothing we can do. Then there's, 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 they're just gonna they're just gonna mine our data, whatever happens. All all day, every day. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I was hoping you were gonna go. No, there's a special button you can press that makes them go away. Well, Apple has kind of helped with that. They're into protecting your personal data. I mean, if you have the latest update for your iPhone, there's no way other apps can sneak in or spy on other apps on your smartphone. So yeah, Facebook or Meta was guilty of that up until mm. iOS 15. So there's, yeah, well, there's some help out there. 
Yeah, but Apple are only doing it so they can keep it to themselves. It's, right. not, it's, not, it's not like they're doing it to help, really. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, look, if there's going to be another heat wave, um, uh, I mean, obviously you're far too cool for school, uh, Burton, but uh, what gadgets, uh, what do we do about our gadgets overheating? How do we well, stop keep them out of, you, you got to keep them out of direct sunlight and, keep, and stop leaving them in the boot. So they overheat. Some people will throw them in the boot going, oh, well, yeah, it's uh, it's nice and shaded in there, but it, it's going to get heat. And these things are sensitive to heat. I'm thinking 90 degrees max is what you want to put it in. Wow. So, yeah, you, you've got to try to keep it indoors or keep it close to your body um, and just out of direct sunlight and out of the direct radiation. And the other thing I was going to add, too, God forbid, if you have another heat wave, if your device starts to overheat, don't just throw it in the don't throw it in the refrigerator um, or on ice. Make sure that you allow it to cool down naturally. Because if you if you just throw it in a cool area or in the freezer, you could ruin your device permanently. Damn it. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to do that. I do, a lot of I see a lot of drivers though with them in the window, and I think you're such an idiot because that is going to burn. Uh, listen, Burton, it's absolutely a delightful to have spoken to you uh, this afternoon for you. Um, uh, so let's do it again soon. Burton, we will. Yeah, good good news. Burton Kelso, there, best named person in the world, uh, chief tech expert at Integral in Kansas City. Burton Kelso is a tech expert and consultant who specializes in online activity. He is joining us live tonight. Uh, Burton, appreciate your time. I want to start with this statement from TikTok, basically blaming the media, expressing deep concern that reports could inspire a real attack. Is there truth to that? Um, there's truth to the fact that these um, TikTok challenges are unsubst uh, unsubstantiated, but I don't think that TikTok can necessarily bring, uh, blame the media. I think the media has a responsibility to make sure that the public is safe. So um, it's unfair for TikTok to kind of blame the media and say it's their fault that this is occurring. Acting out of caution, uh, certainly when it comes to our young people, as you heard. His government could use the video app to spy on U.S. citizens. Joining us now to discuss is Burton Kelso, technology expert. Uh, Burton, good to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. What are your thoughts when you see that? The Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, urging Americans to stay away from that app. I don't think we've seen something like this before. No, we haven't. But I think this comes in light of all of the things that have happened with Facebook and Google as far as having security leaks. Uh, when it comes to social media apps, obviously companies who make those apps have access to a lot of information. So, of course, the first thing that people are going to assume is that uh, that app developer is going to steal information. And it doesn't help the fact that TikTok is made by a company based out of China.
But Burton, this may or may not be the question for you, but if you could help me with it, that'd be great. What is it that, what, what information can you get from TikTok? Is it our first and last names? Is it an email address? What should we be worried about? The information that can be uh, got from TikTok is just anything that's on your smartphone. When you download an app, you enable specific uh, features to look at that, what the app. 13-year-old Nina Wims is now home two months after being arrested. She spent nearly two weeks in a Florida juvenile detention center for a crime she didn't commit. The seventh grader was accused of using Instagram to threaten to kill a teacher and a classmate and bomb their school. Later, evidence showed that Nina was herself a victim of identity theft and bullying. She never sent those threatening messages. But this is a story that is all too familiar. Every year, a disproportionate number of black Americans are arrested and convicted for crimes that they never committed. And with the rise of policing in schools, children and teens are now susceptible to the well-documented racial biases in our system. Here with me now to dive into the issue is tech and cybersecurity expert, Burton Kelso. Burton, let's get right to it. Uh, walk us through exactly what was the 13-year-old accused of? Um, sending threats to the school as far as causing bodily harm to faculty and students. And the unfortunate thing about this is that this is a trend that's been going on uh, since late last year. Uh, there was a, um, a, a trend where students were uh, threatening schools and of course in a lot of instances couple of weeks there have been an influx of people leaving big tech social media sites like facebook and twitter for smaller services like parlor and miwi sites that promote no ads and freedom of speech but what is the community like and are these sites safe well i recently spoke with technology expert burton kelso to learn all about it all right, my news feed on Facebook is filled with people saying that they're leaving Facebook and going to some other social media sites. Why is everybody leaving the big tech social media? Well, the challenge is, is with the election, people and with people getting disappointed with big tech and ads and all of the uh, following, they're going to social media sites such as Parler and MeWe to enjoy freedom of speech and not having to deal with advertisements that are on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, so Parler I've heard of, MeWe is a new one for me. What are these sites? Now, Parler is supposed to be a substitute for Twitter. It comes from the French word to speak, but the whole idea is to be the Twitter killer. And MeWe is a replacement for Facebook. So both interfaces for Parler and MeWe mimic what goes on with Twitter and Facebook. Okay, so what are the, you mentioned Twitter and Facebook, but even more so, what are these experiences like? Like, why is this? I think a lot of us are taking extra precautions and cleaning as much as we can, especially with everything going on. Here to give us his tips on how to best disinfect our tech devices, we have technology expert Burton Kelso. Welcome to the show, Burton. We are so anxious to hear what you have to say about our tech devices. <laughs> Thank you, Aubrey. I will try not to scare you as far as what you need to do to make sure your smartphone's clean. <laughs> I was thinking about that as I was looking over our questions. All right, so let's go ahead and start. We wash our hands, we wipe down surfaces, and we're even cleaning our groceries and packages as we bring them into our homes to protect ourselves from COVID-19. Do you think people are including their phones and other tech items in their cleaning lists? Uh, we know phones and other things like key fobs, they're going with us everywhere, always pretty much in hand. Right, yeah, the challenge with smartphones is that they're some of the dirtiest items that most humans own. Uh, they, they say the average smartphone has more germs than the public restroom, so I don't think people think about their smart devices. We wash our hands, but it doesn't do you any good to put clean hands on a dirty device. Well, this is the... <laughs> they don't call him the technology expert for nothing. We're talking to Burton Kelso, once again joining us for another Tech Tuesday. Yes. You're the man. 
I try to be. Man. <laughs> trying to be like you, right? Me. You're awesome. I, mean, I was going to say, are you saying I'm a man? No. No, I'm not We won't, saying we won't that. go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're talking great gifts for the grads in your life. You have some great options. I was telling you, I'm, my mind is just blown learning about some of this new technology. I feel like it's I'm amazing, isn't it? But every time you're here, you introduce us to something super cool, and I'm excited to share with everybody this fancy thing with a fancy name. What's it called? Skylight. The Skylight. Okay, and what is it? It's not your average digital frame. You can mail photos and videos directly to the frame so if you give out the email address to family members they can just send you photos and videos anytime that and it'll is, show up on the frame well that's what technology is supposed to do right make things convenient welcome back to ozarks fox am it's our friend and favorite tech expert burton kelso great to see you, Why, you. how come you've been gone so long why been, have you not been traveling Oh, well, good. Yeah, you I was in Naples, busy. Florida last week. Oh, yeah. good for you. Good I'm for jealous. you. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. All right. So I was talking about cybersecurity and yes. social media. So. Oh, yeah. Very good. Now we're talking about this whole coronavirus thing. Okay. All right. Well, COVID we want to stay safe. Yes, obviously. Yeah. So the thing with uh, the coronavirus is that they're always telling people to wash your hands, mm -hmm. which yeah, obviously you need to have good hygiene. But what people aren't saying in the media, if I can find it, yeah, I've got my smartphone, mm -hmm. is that smartphones are probably some of the dirtiest items that human yeah. beings carry. Mm -hmm. So smartphones, tablets, uh, even computers uh, can carry the COVID-19 virus, you know, coronavirus. And so you need to practice good tech hygiene to make sure that you don't get the virus from your smartphone or oh from other people's goodness. smartphones. So what's a good way to do that then? Well, I don't know. most people are tempted to utilize uh, like electronic wipes or Clorox <gasps> yeah. wipes, oh. but you cannot put uh, harsh chemicals like uh, Clorox wipes or even bleach on your smart devices because it'll ruin the protective screen okay. on there. Now, I so I shouldn't wipe that on my cell phone? No, not no. at all. Oh. Yeah, you don't want to put this on your face either. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> well, electronics, so I know, right? It'll take a look But I think what this, this will clean it, yeah. but it won't necessarily disinfect it. So that's oh. the key. Okay. Um, and uh, any of those hand wipes, you don't want to use it because it's